In this video on compound interest, we'll look at a, we'll do example two. We'll uh, explore interest compounded semi-annually. Then example three, uh, try to come up with or understand this compound interest formula. Example four, we'll look at uh, an amount compounded semi-annually. And example five, we'll look at an amount that's compounded quarterly. Okay. Start with example two. And I'm just going to do this really quickly. And to be honest, if you just want to watch it, you can. Um, if you want to take it down, you can do that too. But I'm just going to do it really quickly to kind of save you some time on this section. So suppose that $1,000 is invested at 4% interest compounded semi-annually. We're going to complete this table and find a function A for the amount in the account after T years. So at zero years, we have the principal, the first amount, of a thousand dollars in there. After 0.5 years, in other words, six months. See, isn't this funny? This is six months. Uh, compounded semi annually means compounded once every six months after you put the uh, interest in there, right? Or after you put the principal in there. So compound once every six compounded once every six months, and uh, one sec. So for uh, after six months, basically they will give you interest on that. Now watch out for what the interest is. This, this is uh, interesting. The interest that they'll give you because it's compounded twice a year they'll give you the four percent well well of course you'll have your you'll have your thousand dollars of course after six months but you'll also have some interest now the interest they'll give you is they won't give you the full four percent okay they'll divide that by two okay and then they'll take that amount of uh, the ten thousand so in other words you get your thousand plus four percent divided by two two percent of one thousand so the interest rate is four percent because but because it's compounded every six months every or twice a year they give you half of that okay so semi-annually means you divide the rate by two and you compound interest twice a year so after six months they give you a thousand plus two percent of a thousand and of course two percent is zero point zero two times a thousand. Once again, I'm doing this pretty quickly to save you time. Uh, you can take it down if you like, otherwise you can just kind of watch, I guess. But a thousand plus this is one thousand plus, um, let's see, twenty dollars, right? So they'll give you a thousand and twenty. Um, or if you pull out one thousand as a greatest common factor, See, look at the 1,000. Pull that out as the greatest common factor, and you'll get 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.02. You could write it that way. Okay. So in any case, after six months, you get $1,020, uh, and that, of course, is equal to 1,000 times 1.02. Now let's calculate for the amount you get after one year. After one year, at the end of one year, will be the second time they calculate the interest and add it to your amount. And of course, you're starting with, at the end of the year, you're st you, you'll, you, of course you'll have your 1,020, but you'll also have a certain percentage interest of the 1,020. Now what percentage interest is it going to be? Can you remember? write it down. What percent are they going to calculate? Now the interest rate is 4%, but are they going to calculate 4%? No, because it's 4% compounded semi-annually. So what they do, and this is something you have to remember, is that they take the 4% and they divide it by 2. Okay, So you get 1,020 plus 2% 2 of 1,020. Okay? And then calculating that 2% is 0 0.02 times 1,020 
and if I multiply that, I'll get uh, 20, or this is, sorry, oh, so it's 1020 plus that, so that is 1020 plus, and this should work out to be $20.40, so 10,040, if I add them, dollars 40 cent, okay? And of course, if you pull out 1020 as the greatest common factor from this expression, you get 1020 times 1 plus 0 0.02, okay? So in any case, the amount we get back after one year is $1,040.40, which is equal to um, $1,020 times 1 point plus 1 plus 0 0.02, of course, is 1.02, isn't it? Right? And if we just look at what we've got now, we already know, you see, that 1,020 can be written 1,000 times 1 1.02. So we can take this 1,020 and write it as 1,000 uh, times 1 1.02. But in this line, you see, we have not only 1,020, but it's been multiplied again by 1.02. So of course, after one year, basically the 1,000 has been uh, compounded twice. The interest has been calculated twice. So it's 1.02 squared. You see, it's multiplied by itself twice. It's squared. Okay. After 1.5 years, that's a year and a half. That's one year and six months. Okay. Because t is years. So this is one year, six months. One year and six months. Or one and a half years. Um, they will. Count, they will compound it three times, so they're actually going to take your thousand dollars and multiply it by 1.02 cubed, okay, three times, and then you can calculate that. After two years, they'll calculate the interest four times 1.02 to the power of four, and so on and so forth, okay. Um, and after 10 years and 20 years, and so on, so um. After 10 years, of course, it'll be, you know, 1,000 times 1 1.02. What will be the exponent after 10 years? How many times will they have uh, calculated the interest? Or, or calculated the interest and added it on? Well, because it's compounded semi-annually, that means twice per year. Okay, twice a year. So after 10 years, that would be 20 times, right? How about after 20 years? How many times would they have compounded the interest? After 20 years. 40 times, right? So how about after t years? How many times would they have compounded the interest? When it was 10 years, we got 20. When it was 20 years, we got 40. So t years twice t, isn't it? Two times t, right? And just to kind of help us understand the compound interest formula, which we'll come up against soon, the um, the 1,000, you see, is the principal, okay? So what, what we really have here is we have 1,000, okay, times 1 plus uh, 0 0.02 or the actual interest rate 0 0.04 and then we divided that by 2 to get 0 0.02 right and then the um, and then it was twice um, t the number of years how many years it was right so um, of course you can see 0 0.04 divided by 2 gives 0 0.02 Zero 02 and add that to 1 and you get this, right? So um, in general, you take your your principal amount, in this case it's $1,000, but in general it be the principal, and then times 1 plus whatever the rate is, rate, divided by the number of compoundings per year, in this case 2, okay, and then multiplied by 2t, okay? 
So in any case, the general compound interest formula is that your amount is equal to the principal times 1 plus the rate over n, where n is the um, number of compoundings per year. Okay, times to the power of n times t, right? So um, r is the interest rate um, t is what? What's t, what does t represent? Number of years, right? What does a and p represent? P was the principle that you begin with, and A is the amount that you end up with after the interest has been calculated and added. Okay. So in any case, that's the general compound interest formula for any amount of compoundings like twice a year, semi-annually, four times a year, quarterly, or you could have monthly compoundings, that would be 12 times a year. But let's do example four now, and we'll use our formula. John deposits uh, let's put the formula here. John deposits $3,000 in an account paying 2.8% compounded semi annually. Find the amount in the account after five and a half years. Okay, so to use this, we, we have to find the amount. So we don't know the amount. The A is what we're looking for, but we know everything else. So see if you can list what all the things are in this. What's the principle? What's the rate? What's the number of compoundings? And what's the number of years, t? And give your years as a decimal. It'll be useful to use in the formula. OK. So pre please press pause and, and see if you can figure the whole thing out by all means, but at least uh, figure out what all these numbers are. What's the principle that we're investing, depositing? Well, it's 3,000, isn't it? And the rate is what? The rate is 2.8%. Now, 2.8% sorry, is 2.8 per 100, which is what? It is 0 0.028. So you get your rate, your percentage, as a decimal, so that, that you can calculate things with it. N is the number of compoundings per year. Now it's compounded semi-annually. So how many compoundings per year are we going to have? Two, right? Because that is two compoundings per year. Twice a year the interest will be calculated and added to the amount. How many years? Five and a half. Turn that into a decimal. What's a half as a decimal? Five point what? A half as a decimal is zero point five. So this is five point five, isn't it? One half equals zero point five. Did you know that? Okay. One half equals zero point five, right? Okay. So we have all our, our P, R, N, and T as numbers. We just need to plug them into the formula, and then we have the answer. Okay. So A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the power of NT. So A equals P. Now P is 3,000. Let's uh, put it beside it here. Yes, underneath maybe, like that. That help. So the th P is 3,000. And then it's 1 plus, what's R? R is 0 0.028 over. What's N? N is 2, right? To the power of N times T. 2 times T. 2 times 5.5, .5, right? The trick to calculating this is to just do it one little step at a time. If you make a mistake in math, you're wrong, you get the wrong answer, and you don't get the points. You don't want to do that. 
you need to do math as if it's some type of a accountancy problem if you make one mistake in, in accountancy or in bookkeeping then the whole thing is wrong so just think of this as bookkeeping don't make a mistake if you make a mistake you're wrong just, just one step at a time there's no rush write it out so 0 0.028 divided by 2 let's do that in the calculator if you want of course you don't have to because it's got to be simply 0 0.014 right does that make sense now on this exponent we have 2 times 5.5 what does that make 2 times 5.5 you can use the calculator if you like that makes 11 right so we have 3000 and 1 plus this what does 1 plus 0 0.014 make 1.014 right then to the power of 11 okay now on this on a note on this guy on your calculator you might have a little hat symbol which means exponent so you might be plugging in 1.014 to the power of 11 okay and then whatever answer you get take that number and multiply it by 3000 so it's best to do it all it's best to just go okay 1.014 to the power of 11 okay now I happen to get you don't have to write this out like just take that no, that your answer and then multiply it by 3000 okay and you should get 3 Four nine five point seven three seven zero six eight. Or uh, if you get if you get the right answer to the nearest cent, then you're fine. Don't worry about so much at the bits down here. Okay, so if we round that to the nearest cent. Um, Round that so that's you. So round that the nearest cent, of course we have three thousand four hundred and ninety-five dollars and seventy we round the seven up, right? So seventy-four cent would be the answer there. Okay, in dollars. And uh, let's have a look at example five. Kate invests that amount in an account paying four point eight percent compounded quarterly. Okay? Find the amount in the account after three and a half years. Now, let's figure out what, um, first of all, we'll figure out what N is, the number of compoundings per year. Okay? If this is interest is calculated quarterly, how many calculations of interest will there be each year any idea quarterly means how many times per year any idea four times per year or or you could think of it it's actually every three months okay it's at three months six months nine months twelve months that's quarterly but the point is it's four times per year so n equals four because we have four um, compoundings the interest is calculated and added on four times per year of interest per year okay now what is the rate the interest rate as a decimal can you get the interest rate as a decimal well at 4.8 percent okay which is 4.8 per hundred which is 0 0.048 right what is T the number of years well it's three and a half but can you write that as a decimal three point what three and a half is what as a decimal 3.5 right and what's the principal the initial amount P 
is 5,500, right? So we can use our formula now. Our amount A equals the principal 5,500 times 1 plus what's the rate? R over N. We've got to do R over N, right? The rate is 0 0.048 divided by n. What's n? n equals 4. That's 4 compoundings per year and then times n to the power of nt. So to the power of n is 4 times t. What's t? 3.5 isn't it? So 4 times 3.5. And again the way to make sure you get this right is not to make a mistake. So just do it step by step and write things out carefully and clearly and try not to make a mistake and you should get it right. So we've got to div divide this by 4 and then we have to multiply that by 4. That makes sense, right? That's the first thing. So go ahead and divide that by 4. What do you get? You should get 0 0.012 which means, by the way, by the way, that means that uh, the interest that is calculated, you see 0 0.012 as a percentage is 1.2%. So they're calculating 1.2% interest quarterly, uh, four times a year, right? Now, four times 3.5 is what? Seven times two, it's 14. So in three and a half years, you see in three years, there's four quarters, right? There's four quarters, or sorry, in three years is 12 quarters, because there's four quarters in one year, three, six, nine, 12 months, okay? And in three years, there's 12 quarters, and then in another half a year, there's another two quarters, so that makes 14. So 14 times, they're going to add on 1.2%, okay? So they're not giving you 4.8%, four times a year, they're giving you an extra 1.2 percent four times per year. So 14 times they're going to add on 1.2 percent interest onto this. And if you just calculate this formula, you don't have to calculate the interest 14 times, you just have to figure this formula out and uh, you, you can get the, the answer pretty quickly. And so this is one of the good uses of exponents. Now. Um, of course, this thing here is, well, I guess we should write that out, 5,500, this is 1.012 to the power of 14, right? And of course, in your calculator, you might like to do 1.012 to the power of 14. You'll have a little hat symbol there for the exponent. You might want to you might want to um, write that number out or you could just kind of leave that number in your calculator and then multiply it by 5500 okay but whichever way you do it you should get 6499.648408 uh 6484.08 Zero 08 or something close to that but hopefully you'll get the same amount of nearest cent. If you get the same amount of nearest cent you're right. So 6 ah, sorry 6499 point what? Now we've got 64 cent but we've got an 8 here right? So we're going to round him up so it'll be point six five. okay? So 6,499.65 cents right?